foundation paper piecing requires a few tools and the first of which is going to be your pattern this particular pattern is going to be a free download that you're going to find the link below this video and you will be using this to do your actual paper piecing with the beauty of paper piecing is that all you have to be able to do is stitch neatly on a line and you're going to see that as we work through the process you're going to need a pair of paper scissors i like to use an add a quarter plus ruler and the difference between the regular add a quarter and the add a quarter plus is that you have a tapered edge and this makes it easy to fold. If you don't have the plus ruler or you don't want to use this ruler at all, that's okay, but you're going to want to have either a piece of cardstock or a strip of poster board, something like that to help you fold on the lines. You'll want clips and pins, an iron and an ironing station and a uh, rotary cutter as well. I also like to keep just a bowl next to my sewing machine because that way I can toss in all my scraps and not worry about hitting the trash can that's a little ways away. You'll also want just a regular old number two pencil as well as a regular rotary cutting ruler. When I start foundation paper piecing, the first thing you're gonna do is pull out that regular ruler and on all of your pattern pieces, you will find that there is a square that is measured out one inch each direction. And you will lay your ruler over top and you just wanna make sure that a one inch square lines up. This makes sure that your pattern will fit together in the end and that your printer was cooperating when you printed it. Remember when printing that you always want to download your file and then set it to actual size or 100%. Once you have assured that your pattern is the correct size, you pull out those paper scissors. And I like to rough cut around the edges of all of my templates. And this block only has two sections. So it's fairly simple. And these are labeled. You're also gonna notice that there are hash marks that look different depending on the section of the pattern. And that shows you where like fabrics should go together as you assemble the pattern. You should also feel like you can be as creative as you like when you are choosing where your fabrics go and you can have fun with it. I would suggest though that any of this diagonal cross hatching that you see, that's the background. So you probably are gonna to wanna to make sure those are all matching your background fabrics. When you start to cut and assemble your block, you are going to want to make sure that first you cut out all of your background pieces that are larger that surround the overall block. This way, you are absolutely certain that you have enough fabric in the sizes that you need to complete the project. For this simple block, I have cut out a piece of, for my main focal print, a, a print of a cardinal. And so that's gonna fit nicely inside the bobble. And it's going to look similar to this block that I've already completed. The other section is going to be the top of the ornament. And in this case, it's a little hard to see on film, but you're going to see, I chose a sparkly, linen blend that has some metallic to it for some fun and then this is a piece of actually i have a couple of pieces here that are my background fabrics and foundation paper piecing allows you to work with smaller pieces a lot of the time so it's a it's great to use up all those scraps from what we had cut our main background pieces from the other thing you're going to notice that I'm using, but is an optional tool, is I have a light box that has been fitted with a cutting mat on top of it. You can use either a light box or you can hold your foundation paper pieces up to a light source. So that can either be a window or a bright light. The first thing we're going to start with is the bonus bobble segment one. 
and this has three pieces. You construct your foundation paper piecing in the order of the numbers on your foundation paper piece. The first thing I want to do is fold on the line between segments one and two. So between those sections, I'm just going to give that a nice fold. When positioning your segment, your section one, your fabric should be right side up. And all of the time when you're foundation paper piecing, your fabric goes on the non-printed side because we're gonna flip it over and stitch from the printed side. You can choose to use a pin here, or if you have a larger piece, like in the next section, you may even choose to do a large machine basting stitch, or you can use a tiny bit of glue for a glue stick. But I'm just gonna hold that there, and I just wanna make sure that on my foundation paper piece that all of that section is covered plus at least one quarter of an inch in any direction that has an adjoining section that we're stitching to. So this is all set. And I'm going to see if I can get this piece to work with my next piece and my next section of foundation paper piecing. The way to check this is to use that light box or a light source and how we folded that on the line. We want to make sure that when the fabric is placed, and this is going to be right sides together, I'm using a solid, which is a really easy fabric to use for foundation paper piecing, so I recommend a solid or an all-over print for anyone who is using foundation paper piecing for the first time. So I'm placing it so that this folded over section, so my fabrics are right sides together, this folded over section is completely covered by the fabric when it's folded. Then we're going to unfold it and go over to the sewing machine. At the sewing machine, we're going to make sure that you have a thread that's coordinating. I like to use my quarter inch foot, but you can use your foot that came with the sewing machine as well because all of your lines are printed. And I'm adjusting my thread, my stitch length for my project to about a one and a half. I typically sew at about a two and a half when I'm piecing. So the one and a half stitch length perforates the paper more, makes it stronger. And when I go to pull out the paper at the very end of the project, I am going to have a sturdier line of stitching. I like to start right where the line is that adjoins my stitching line. And I take a couple of stitches, then I back stitch two or three times. Stitch across to the end of the line, and I take a couple of back stitches. As I stitch, I like to clip all of my threads as I go because it creates a much neater project. And I can also pull out that pin that was holding my first piece of fabric in place. The next step is to flip the piece of fabric back on the seam and just make sure, double check that everything's covered. And then we will come over to the iron and give it a quick press. The first and second pieces are always the most challenging to get into place in my opinion, because you get a little bit of shifting now and then because they aren't really held down super well. I'm going to go ahead after I've checked it with pressing and fold back right on the line where we were earlier. And I wanna trim this seam allowance using my add a quarter ruler. So this ruler has a little lip and I'm catching that on the edge of the paper and it just really streamlines the process of trimming away. So now I have a quarter inch seam here I'm going to fold that 
background fabric back into place. You can also give it a little bit of a press. Make sure everything's laying nicely. And if you want, like this piece might get in my way as I sew. So I'm just going to carefully rough cut a little bit of the fabric away so that I have less to deal with in the movement area. Our next part of this block is segment is section three. So I am using that tapered edge of my ruler, or you can use a piece of cardstock, a greeting card, a scrap of poster board, anything with a straight edge that's going to allow you to fold right on that line. Once that's folded, I can use my found my add a quarter ruler, which is the easiest option. Or if you don't have the add a quarter ruler, you can pull out your regular ruler, line up your cutting line. You want to make sure you're giving yourself a quarter inch seam allowance away from that fold of the paper and trim that away. Now we're ready to position our next piece of fabric. And I had already had a scrap for the first section that was about the right size. But in this case, I'm going to need to cut off of a bigger piece. So when I'm determining what size I want my foundation paper piece segments to be, I like to work with strips of fabric. Um, and so in this case, I want something that's going to be a little bit bigger on both sides. So I want to cut it at least two inches wide. And I'm not measuring really carefully. This is actually a little over two inches wide. But now I have a nice piece of fabric that's a lot easier to deal with than this big one. I'm going to position these so that that cut edge, remember we just cut that to a perfect quarter of an inch, so that the edges of the fabric line up. And when I'm placing it on my light source, you can see the shadow of this piece behind everything. So I know that my paper will be completely covered. You always check when you are folded, not unfolded. Because see how this is how I'm stitching, but my fabric is to the other side. I'm back at the sewing machine. And so now I suggest holding on to at least your top thread, preferably both your top and bottom threads. We're stitching with about a one and a half stitch length. I back stitch a couple of stitches at the beginning, stitch across the line, back stitch a couple of stitches at the end, and then trim my threads. All this thread trimming and fabric trimming are why it's great to have a bowl or vessel of some sort to hold all of your scraps. Now that I'm back over at my iron, I'm going to go ahead and remember we have already trimmed this seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. It's only that very first seam allowance for each section of your pattern that you need to check. Give that a press. And now we have our first section complete as far as stitching goes, and we can trim it down using our regular ruler. My favorite rulers are the ones that have a stickiness to the back of them so they don't slide around. I'm using a Quilter Select right now, but I believe there are a few other brands that also have that feature now. I'm rotating this around. And I just want to make sure that I'm cutting right on that line. And I may even save that piece because it might be useful later. You'll find that you can frequently use the cutoff pieces. Like this was the end of the strip that I cut earlier, and that will definitely be useful. Anything an inch or more, I try to save. Okay, so here is our first part of our block. The second part of the block, it's gonna have this adorable cardinal I'm really excited about. 
how these blocks are going to come together using that. So you're going to remember that we're always stitching on the printed side, fabric goes on the unprinted side, and I am turning my fabric over because for the very first piece, you want to make sure that the wrong side of the fabric is touching the paper part of your template. And I am actually pinning this in place. And because this is a larger segment and it's the first segment in particular, I am going to do a couple of lines of large stitch basting on the sewing machine. You could also use just a little bit of glue stick or you could work with the pins. It really depends on your comfort level. Um, I found that I really like the ease of the basting and it's worth pulling it out at the end. I'm taking my basting stitch, stitch length on my machine all the way to a five. And I'm just doing a short line of stitching on the top. and the bottom of my block. If your pin's in the way, go ahead and remove that. And again, I'm trimming those threads. I just can't bear having all that excess hanging around. And if you are beginning paper piecing or you just wanna really make sure your block isn't going to shift, you could even do little pieces on the side. If you're a pretty confident paper piecer, you could do a single line all the way across your block diagonally and it would probably work out great for you. But the less you have moving and flopping around for you, the happier you will probably be especially when you're first beginning. Larger pieces are actually a little harder to deal with than the smaller ones. So if you're doing the full fest of bobbles quilt, you're probably gonna be pleasantly surprised at how easy it is to do the piecing within each section. Got all my threads trimmed, and I'm making sure to grab my pins that I've dropped beside my machine and add them back to the pin cushion. And I'll remove any remaining pins. The only downfall of using a pin to hold things in place is that when you're pulling out your other rulers to fold on the line, you're gonna get a bump from that pin. And that's why the basting is kind of convenient. So we've just covered seg section one of segment two. So we've covered that. And I fussy cut mine to focus on the cardinal, but this is gonna be a cute block no matter what fabric you use and whether you choose to fussy cut it or not. I'm placing my tapered edge of my add a quarter ruler on the line between section one and section two of my block. And I'm folding on that. I'm gonna go ahead and Use that lip of the ruler to trim. And now I'm ready to position section two of my block, which is gonna be background fabric. Now, if you can see, and you might need to hold this up to the light, this is section two of my block. So I need to make sure that that is gonna be entirely covered plus a quarter of an inch on each side. So I just pulled out that little tiny piece that I trimmed off and I wasn't sure if I would be able to use or not, but it looks like it's going to work. You're going to see around the edge how the darker fabric comes all the way out around the block to about here. So that covers this section, section two, plus a quarter of an inch all the way around. And I lined up that piece of fabric with the cut edge that we had just trimmed to a quarter of an inch. A 
at the machine, I am remembering now to turn my stitch length back to about a one and a half or so. Start at the end of the line, back stitch, stitch across the full line, and when it intersects the next line, back stitch a couple of stitches as well. That back stitching really locks in what you've sewn so that you don't have pieces coming off when you don't want them to. Again, we're going to come over to the iron, fold that piece out, give it a press, and we're ready to add section three. When I lay this on my light box or hold it up to my light source, you're going to see how all of section two is completely covered, plus at least a quarter of an inch in all directions. Next, we are doing section three. So you're gonna put the ruler or your cardstock onto the line between section three and all of the previously pieced sections. Fold that back. Use your ruler to measure and trim a quarter of an inch. And we're ready to place the next piece of fabric. Section three comes out all the way here. Now I'm not including the seam allowance that is actually drawn in because this is a corner piece, but if you wanted to see that, this would be where the seam allowance is. So you definitely wanna make sure this is completely covered. I'm taking another piece of fabric that I'm roughly sure will accommodate this section, which it does because I'm looking at the right sides of my fabric are together. I have at least a quarter of an inch all the way around this part of the block that we're trying to cover. And I'm pulling out that add a quarter ruler or your regular ruler and trimming the background fabric to be a quarter of an inch as well. Remember, you're always checking to make sure that your piece will be covered when you've got your paper folded. When you unfold it, this might look wrong to you because you've got this pat, this fabric going a completely odd direction. And until you become used to seeing what it looks like, just trust that when, if it is completely covered when it's folded, it's gonna be completely covered when you're finished. Back at the machine, we are once again stitching on the line. I'm back stitching a couple of stitches at the very beginning. I'm sewing the length of the line and back stitching once again. We're going to the iron. At the iron, we are going to give this a press and we've got our first corner done. And the series of the straight lines are going to give the illusion of a round bulb ultimately. You may want to go ahead and press that whole block just to make sure everything's looking good because now it's time to trim around the edges. On all of these pattern pieces, you're going to notice that we have a quarter of an inch built in here at the edge. So all you have to do is trim directly on that printed line.
discarding all those pieces as I go. Large ones can be used if you're making additional blocks. And the smaller ones you can go ahead and put into your trash bowl that should be near your sewing machine. Last side. And I like to use a ruler with a non-stick, or I should say a sticky surface on the back, and that prevents it from sliding around. So here we go. We have the main part of our bobble, and we have the top ornament hanger portion of the block. When we go to stitch these together, this is what it will look like on the back. And my goal is to get this line to match up perfectly with this line, or as close to it as I possibly can. And the way that I have found to do that of course, your pieces are going to be right sides together, just like they would be in regular piecing. I like to take a straight pin and stick it straight through that point on the top piece. And then the bottom piece, I'm going to stick it straight through until, and it's kind of a trial and error, until it goes perfectly through that corner. And then I keep this pin as perpendicular to the paper as I possibly can. And I use a wonder clip and just clip it in place. So you have the pin holding it straight and then you prevent forward and back movement using the clip. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the second corner. And when I'm foundation paper piecing, so I'm putting this straight through. When I'm foundation paper piecing, I find that I get the greatest success, no matter how long that seam is, to do the two ends first. And then I go to the halfway point. And I'm always pin straight through, clip to keep it from shifting from side to side. So this should be laying pretty flat, and it is. At about the center point, I'm gonna stick a pin straight through and with any luck, it will go straight through. It's easier to do on shorter seams, and it's also easier the more you do it because you get more practice. This is probably how I would typically pin, but if you want more pins, or you're doing a longer seam, you again go to the halfway point, stick your pin through straight, add another clip, and you can do that as much as you want. So if I really wanted to, I could even subdivide this one more time and pin and clip. That was slightly off the line, so I'm gonna try one more time. There we go, that one looks good. And I'm gonna add a clip. So let's take this over to the sewing machine. Now that I'm over at the sewing machine, I'm going to remove this first clip almost immediately because I need to be able to put this under the presser foot. And the pin I'm going to have standing up as much as I can and I want to leave it in until the last possible second. I'm going to do my best to line up my needle and then I'm going to start stitching. I'm still using a fairly short stitch length, but I may increase it to almost a two. And I like to back stitch where this adjoining line starts. So I might start towards the edge of the fabric as I'm starting to sew, but I find that that back stitch right where the first line intersection is, is a good place to add a little stability. And you can probably tell that I remove the clip first, and then as I get closer and closer to the needle is when I'm going to remove that pin. The longer the pin stays in, the more likely you are to get a nicely aligned block. And where this line ends, 
I'm back stitching again and then I'm sewing off the edge. Clip those threads. Now we're going to look and see how I did. This is, is pretty close to being right on the line and that's the front of the block. And that's a relief. The back of the block is also pretty much right on that line. So I'm good to go. And I like to gently pull the paper out of the seam allowance by itself. And it should, because we've perforated it with that needle, tear out pretty nicely. The reason I get rid of it in the seam allowance is that it's easier to press. You could also go ahead and remove it from the rest of the block if you like to. I tend to leave it in because all of these seams are just more places that your fabric can fray and the paper kind of protects it until we are ready to layer the entire quilt top. But it's a matter of personal choice. So if you find that you like to remove that, go ahead and do it. Over at the iron, I am going to press the seam allowance towards the bobble, although you can absolutely choose to press it up if you would like. Some people also enjoy pressing their seam allowances open in this sort of an instance, and that's fine too. Quilter's choice, give it a nice press. And here we go. We have our finished block, isn't it cute? I'm so excited about these. These circular blocks that don't have any additional piecing are great for your larger motifs and a couple of them together, like in the pattern, will make a really cute pillow top. If you've enjoyed making this bonus bobble, I hope that you will also join us and make Festive Bobbles, which is a complete pattern for a lap quilt. And it has six different block versions that are all foundation paper pieced and each have their own personality.